I am with Jay Abraham here. If you have not heard of this gentleman, folks, you're talking to, you're going to spend time with him. CEO, business strategist, probably responsible for the development, help, uh, help with, of more entrepreneurs than any other living person on this planet. I don't think that's an over-exaggeration. Jay, it is my pleasure uh, to spend time with you today and also to be able to say that you're going to be at the 10X Growth Con. Well, it's similar. I've looked forward to interacting with you, Grant. So it's my pleasure as well. Yeah. Now, now the couple of conversations I've had with you, Jay, like, you know, I, I hang up the phone with you and I'm like, dude, that's one of the smartest people I've ever talked to. I'm not sure I actually understand everything Jay just told me, but I know it's important. That's funny. Okay. So Jay, talk about why did you agree, number one, to do this event with me? Uh, well, for two reasons. You have the respect and you have the uh, attraction capability to a, a broad spectrum of entrepreneurs and people who are involved in performance-based activity, sales, marketing. A lot of them don't realize how much more they can achieve from effort, time, expense, opportunity, access. And I thought it'd be a great forum to be able to really introduce uh, some of my body of work through you in a very real world case study type of a a format to people that really had never thought about it. So, so, and when you talk about how much more people can do, I mean, the people that come to you want to do more and the people that are going to be at this event want to do better and, and they believe they can. Where, where, Jay, where do you start with someone? Let's, let's say, let's, let's break it into three sectors and, and assume somebody's just getting started. Somebody's got something happening already. And then maybe the third level is somebody's already very successful. Like, sure. like, Okay, uh, so I'll give you the scenario. So uh, I think a little bit of, like, I, I'm not going to try to divert you, but a little context in why I'm uniquely skilled, not arrogant, but just clinical. So I've been involved in 465 industries, not businesses worldwide, for over three decades. And I've been able to uh, firsthand experiment with, I mean, thousands of different strategic models, thousands of different access vehicles, thousands of different distribution approaches, thousands of different competitive advantage generating approaches, thousands of different alternative ancillary uh, channels, thousands of different uh, new derivative ways to uh, repurpose somebody's product service, thousands of ways to penetrate new markets. And I got started with people that had no money, so I had to be very masterful at creating relationships where we paid on performance and I did it for we've done billions of dollars so for a startup I probably would you know I can help them figure out whatever it is they need so who's already got their market figure out how in the world to collaborate with them on a very equitable basis where they only have to expend uh, money after money is in their bank and it becomes a profit center and we've basically helped, uh, you know, again, it's, it's a matter of record. Uh, I think we've got, well, we got 100,000 success stories. We probably helped, I don't know, so billions of people, excuse me, in, in the course, and a lot of them have been startups. In middle markets, here's the way we do it. It's very simple. We, we break it into two parts, Grant. One is called maximizing. One is called multiplying. First thing you do is you look at whatever they're doing right now, even if you don't believe it's the highest and best approach, the highest yielding approach, because whatever they're doing is literally what's driving the business. And so what we do is we take every element of their current revenue model and we either deconstruct it, reconstruct it, or we improve it, or we replace it. And because I know a lot of higher performing alternatives that take less time, less effort, less cash, less risk, we have a lot of uh, arrows in our quiver. Once and after we've done that, normally it, it uh, liberates an enormous amount of windfall revenue and profits that we then use to develop far more powerful alternative approaches that can just uh, catapult them much higher. But it's a very sequential process. Maximize what you're doing first, even if it's not the best thing to be doing, and then use the the stimulated increased cash flow profit to fund the higher performing additional activities so, or replacement activities. So so Jay, you're saying, and, and I agree with this, okay? Basically boil that down to follow the money. 
you're saying, hey, do what's necessary right now to fund the next activity. Yeah, but okay. but make make whatever you. So so I'll give you an example. In a typical business, any size, if you look at it, and I can explain it uh, when I'm at your program, there's probably 25 to 50 leverage or impact points within the revenue system itself. Each one can be made to perform better. If you only get 10% in each one of them, the cumulative effect can be hundreds of, of percent. If you look at my background, there are uh, a scary number of companies that went from X to 10X, and one would think it's all because I'm so brilliant. It's not. It's because most people limit, restrict, constrain unknowingly, undeservedly, and unintentionally the amount of sales they could be generating from yep. effort, uh, the amount of dollars they could be generating, repurchases, referrals. And, and we take them and we teach them how to make whatever they're doing produce many times more yield for no more time, effort, capital, or risk. Yeah. So, so again, though, like, like I hear a lot of people say, oh man, don't follow the money, you know, find what you love to do, love what you do. And the money will one day follow. I mean, where are you at with that premise? Uh, I think you've got to be able to create value first and foremost, that is decisively superior to what the market is getting from everyone else and from the alternatives and from doing nothing and you've got to be able to see what I think about following the money. Most people, there's a great story. Uh, Willie Sutton, the greatest bank robber of all time, robbed more banks than ever. Uh, they finally caught him back in the 50s. And why do you rob him, banks, oh. Willie? Yeah, that's right. They, they said, why banks? And he said, because that's where the money is. Most yeah, people yeah. waste most of their time on suspects, not high probability and high viability sources. What we do is always figure out who's the highest probability Who's already got your market and we can partner with first? Yeah. Who's already got your market and we can target on second? You know, how are you wasting your time and your effort third? And, yeah. you know, I, I've done a lot of very, very analytical, comparable things. Everything from testing how you gotcha. initiate a phone call, a presentation, a follow-up. And all those factors can be enhanced maximum, sometimes 21 times. When you have that kind of leverage in 20 or 30 different elements, it's shameful not to know and not to really utilize it. So it's follow the money, but make yeah. sure every element is high performance and optimal. Yeah. So, so, dude, I, I mean, I, I got to tell you, I can't wait to spend three hours with you talking about this exact topic because what you're saying is, and, and I, I, I basically simplify everything because of my. No, 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 no. My buy you, my buy you upbringing. You know, you're very, you're very, you, you, you know. But I'm like, dude, who's got my money? Who's yeah. got my money? Not who needs my product. Because if the guy needs my product but doesn't have any money, like, what am I doing? I can't grow my business and I cannot scale and be charitable if I don't have money. Yeah, very, very well stated. Very, uh, thank you. You can be my Torkenberg. It's funny. Uh, I What we're going to do is going to be fun. And I think it might be fun to uh, not, not get deep in it. But what I'm going to do with you there, I think, is going to be very stimulating because we're not going to do theoretical rhetoric and yeah and ideas we're going to take real life situations problem solving challenge resolving issue uh uh, uh addressing and most importantly opportunity mining and we're going to let people pose specific scenarios and situations in their business I and love that. They can, yeah, as long as they can so, clearly explain it we're going to yeah, try to knock them down for them yeah and if they can't clearly explain it i'll i'll help them because i'm going to be doing a q a with every speaker as well as a q a with you after so that we right. can actually lay it out so if a masseuse oh. says hey how do i go from giving 10 massages a week to to 80 or yeah. ashley furniture the ceo's there and says hey i'm already i got a three billion dollar business how do i go to 38 billion yeah. Um, those are going to be different answers, but they're going to require some of the same strategies. Yeah, there are certain universal principles that govern everything, and there are certain unique principles that uh, that come into effect at certain stages or where certain convergent factors. And I don't believe one size fits all. That's why I'm excited. I think this is going to be very stimulating, not just for the audience, but for you and I. Folks, you're listening to Jay Abraham, CEO and business strategist, has probably been responsible, worked in 465 industries, probably has been responsible without exaggerating for helping more businesses worldwide than, than maybe any other people. I mean, some of the countries you've been to, China, how many times? 
Uh, 40. Like what, some other, South America? Well, last week, I mean, last year we went twice to Italy, twice to London, once to, uh, once to Paris, uh, Ireland, Vietnam, uh, uh, Singapore, uh, Malaysia, twice to, to Tokyo, and I think we went three times to China, not yeah. counting. Uh, I, yeah, Jay, I, Jay, I do a lot of work overseas. This guy's been everywhere, folks, and he's going to have a translator at this event. The translator is Grant Cardone. So yours truly. <laughs> hey, dude, what do you think about my list of speakers? Oh, it's quite profound. You have some, and, and obviously, you know, I know I, I mentor uh, and I'm very friendly with um, Damon. Uh, with Damon, of course, and I know Kevin. Yeah. And uh, the, the, you know, you've got a very preeminent uh, list, but here's the key the, the quality of the speakers is only as relevant as the quality of the action. The people take with yeah. the ideas yeah. that are shared. Well, that's and, I, mean, I, I, I think you're going to have a very quality audience, and that's what intrigues me. Well, and the audience is going to be good. I mean, I could have done these tickets for ninety nine dollars, Jay, but I was like, you know what? I'm not going to do that because I'm going to get an audience that wants something for free and can't can't really value you know names like Les Brown, Frank Kern. Uh, I don't know if you know Andy Frisella. He runs a $100 million company. A guy named Tom Cummings, who I cannot wait to hook you up with. He did $254 million in sales last year on a net profit of 50%, 51%. guy named Bobby Castro at Bankers Healthcare just got his company evaluated at $600 million. Brad Lee. Have you met Brad Lee? Yeah, Brad and I are collaborating. Dude, I dude, like Brad. Brad's cooler than heck. Dude, Brad is as cool as they come, and he did about $50 million last year. So, I mean, I got some players in a room. Well, you know, I want to make a point that I think is very important, um, and, and this is just something I've observed after doing you know, a lot of seminars and a lot of trainings and conferences. The biggest – most people have a, a mistake when they come to a profound event like you've orchestrated. They think attending – is the commitment the yep. real it's nothing more than the preparation nobody really wants to be uh speakers good ones don't want to be intellectual entertainment they want to be catalysts that move you from it's not information it's transformation they want you to go back to your businesses back to your jobs back to your uh you know you're selling uh territories and kick ass at a higher more powerful more profitable more preeminent level so i am committed and fanatical about moving people to execute, take action, implement, and really utilize everything, not just that I say, but that everybody says, because that's the real key. Yeah, so what Jay's saying, and I totally agree with this, is like the speakers, they're good speakers. At the top of the food chain, they don't just want a speaking gig. They, they don't just want, oh, I, I worked 200 gigs this year. You, neither one of us will do that many gigs this year. I don't know how many gigs you're going to do. But, but I, I know I, one of the reasons I have Jay here is because I want Jay to bring lift my game. You know, I, want, I, I, I have that list because I want my game lifted. I want to figure out how do I go from a $100 million business to a billion-dollar enterprise. Is it real? Is it possible for me, Jay? What do you think? Sure. I mean, it, it, it's 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 – you know, it's not only possible. I mean, I believe that if you're adding the kind of value that I believe you're adding, it's a moral obligation and a responsibility and an opportunity for you to impact people who probably are accepting a fraction of a fraction of the outcome, the performance, the income, and the success they could have. So you have people around the world who need you. And the key is figuring out the best vehicles that are cost effective. And could, yeah, 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 sure. It's not a problem. <laughs> now we'll talk about it. Okay, good. So, folks, you're going to be with Jay Abraham and Grant Cardone at the 10X Growth Conference. I've given you a little bit of taste. I want to introduce you to him. The dude is a stud. He's a real deal. He's been doing business in the business sector in all countries, 465 industries. This guy is a legend. If you've never spent time reading about him, studying him, the guy is going to bring thunder, lightning, and information from the gods to give you a catalyst to go out into the world. And whatever you're doing, he's going to show you how to do it better and at bigger levels. So, Jay, I, I know how valuable your time is, man. I really appreciate you carving out some to come down to Miami. Well, uh, I'm Forward to it. It's 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 going to be uh, a, a great experience, and I think the greatest thing will be that we'll be able to make a profound impact on your 
on your attendees and they'll do something with it. Uh, that makes me very happy. Yeah, Jay. And when you go to these events, Jay, what do you look to take away from them? Uh, I grow from knowledge that I get. I grow from helping give people cri- critical thinking. I grow from changing people's paradigm and breaking wide open log jams in both their thinking and actions that they don't even know they're struggling with. I grow from, you know, sometimes I get clients and that's great, but, uh, you know, making a difference to people who are committed. Oh, there's three things I was going to say. This is something somebody taught me. So there's three kinds of people in the world, Grant, in the business world, in the selling world. People who watch things happen, spectators in the stand. People who make things happen, they're players on the field. And people who let things happen to them, they're victims. Yeah. I like to create victors, okay? Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I appreciate that. And and uh, look, look, when you go to these, though, Jay, do you ever walk away like with some piece of data that you're like, man, I got something out of here? Have you ever always, been? Always, because what, what I used to do, Grant, was a soliloquy of, I mean, I have more principles and, and uh, concepts, stratagems, laws that I've created over the years of probably about 500. And I used to just do a litany of all of them. And I was always the one that talks. But when you do interactive problem solving, uh, mini type hot seats with people, you are learning two things. You're learning their, 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 uh, their reality. And that's what you I mean. They represent the world you have to deal with. So the more you understand whatever kind of logic, whatever kind of belief systems, the market is currently adhering to the more you can appreciate and also help alter also by asking very provocative Socratic questions, you can uncover enormous uh, breakthroughs that they don't even know. A lot of people don't even know what they know. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I've been very blessed. I, in order to help a client, I have to learn the business and learning the business is getting educated. Yeah. 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 uh, so, so yeah, I'm a perpetual uh, student. Yeah. So Jay, how uh, uh, you know? L- let me just form a question to you: like hustle, yeah. hustle versus strategy, because it's a real popular to see an Instagram post right now. Hustle and grind, and but but where does hustle stop and strategy start, and which one is more valuable? If, if you can have that conversation, sure. Uh, I am known probably more and people think me in marketing but i would say i'm a better strategist and a masterful thinking partner and the growth that i have created for most of the clients that have just uh soared has been by making them super strategic and not tactical or episodic or erratic but strategy without a uh, very well orchestrated tactical implementation is a waste but i think strategy will always trump tactics as far as building a business, not necessarily generating cash flow to pay the rent today. I try to get every business that wants to be really uh, enduring, preeminent, and uh, preemptive to become a masterful strategist first, because most people don't even understand how powerful strategy can be and how preemptive it can be and how much it can really outperform I say anyone who's tactical, but you've got to have the time. I mean, you, there's certain yeah, yeah. Because if you don't, if you don't have any cash, yeah. then you have to do, you have to do some tactical things or some opportunistic things. There's not one again. Yeah, I'm, but 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 I guess Jay, my question is really about like a guy wakes up in the morning, he's like, I got to go out and just hustle. At what point does he have to add some some actual strategy? I think I think about Brady and the New England Patriots this weekend. I mean, they're, they're down 25 points and they're looking at the clock like it's no big deal. And I'm like, that's not about hustle. That's about strategy. Yeah. yeah. See, you said they get up and they have to hustle. I think you get up, you take a breath and that you you reflect and you adhere to your strategy all the time. Yeah. yeah. The strategy yeah. should drive everything you do. So strategy is senior to the hustle. Yeah. I yeah. mean, totally well, agree. It's, it's, I mean, here, here's a concept. Most people when in life, when they're motivated or when they're scared they dig holes that's equivalent of hustle yeah. the more motivated or fear they are the deeper they dig the hole the first question is should you even be digging a hole second should you be digging it there third yeah yeah should you be digging it with a spoon instead of a power trial and third, yeah, yeah should you be the one digging it 
I, I love mean, that, dude. I love that. Make sure you bring that analogy because I want to go in depth on that those three points because sure. that's how simple I want to get things. One last question. Network. How much does the network, your network of people, influence your net worth? Uh, I, I think it's incalculable, but I don't think most people understand how to create a rich, true, authentic relationships i think that they are very superficial and most i mean most people and i know a lot of people who are connectors and they don't even know how to monetize because they're very superficial i've been very blessed i have a network worldwide of people that very honestly would do almost anything for me but the reason is first i always do almost anything for them without without expectation and it's genuine and it's valued and I think there's a strategy to building relationships. I've done billions of dollars utilizing what I call relational capital, other people's uh, resources, distribution, brand, uh, technology, uh, everything. And there's a psychology, a strategy, and a mindset to it. And it's much different than affiliates. It's much different than just trying to, to you know, get someone to do something with it. There's a much greater... Uh, depth, richness, and uh, and if you want to get into that when we're together, I, you know, I'm probably known for doing more of that than about anybody. So I'll be happy to share. Yeah. A, a, well, you hey, I, you know, sure. I just I just wish I would have met you earlier in my career because for too long, you're a little older than me. You know, yeah. I, I wouldn't know if we. I, I think we're about the same age, but um, I, I spent too much time just working on my net worth without leveraging the network so i really really appreciate you making the time carving out some time um to spend time with us in miami and so that i can share you with all my friends that, that are coming from all over the world i mean i got people coming from portugal russia brazil right. hawaii california so i really appreciate you jay i can't tell you enough i hope to make this the start of a really really rich relationship that we share and that we can be catalysts together for a lot of other people so thank yeah. you so much my honor. Thank you for the time today. 10X Growth Con. Folks, if you haven't gotten your ticket, this is just one of the 22 speakers, 41 sessions, all involved with Q&A. You're going to be getting something from me and Jay Abrahams there. I promise you, not only will it be the experience of your lifetime, it'll be a memorable thing, but it's going to be a catalyst and a kickoff for something that literally will change your life, your business, and the way you look at both life and business. Thanks for joining us today. I appreciate it. And Jay, can't wait to spend time with you, my friend. Ditto. Thank you.